So this is stage three, where we start using some more of Excel's functions. We've got the uh, the same um, the same setup with regards uh, review. Something slightly different this time is I've got rid of all the extra columns down here, and I've unhidden uh, this layer uh, column here. Now this was in uh stages one and two because uh, you can see here we've um the gates are allocated to layers the fences are allocated to layers so um this is all we're left within our markup list now so we've got um these fences here and we've got some gates further down close ball gates so this is the information we're going to be working with uh, we jump over to excel We've got our standard uh, details page with all the rates on again. But the the issue with this setup is as we're not using uh, macros and we're not using Power Query, we're just trying to do this based on standard Excel formulas. What we have to do is uh, we have to export the details from uh, from review to a CSV file. Click OK. It exports the details. And then we're going to have to copy these. We then go back into our spreadsheet. I've got a page here. Literally paste the values in. Ooh. I've got too many columns. I haven't set that up properly, but let's just um, I jump to review. I've got subject, label, layer, length, count. Let's jump back to the CSV. Subject, labor, layer. I don't need the length unit. I don't know why I've got that in there. I need to set that up properly in the next one, but here we go. So. Copy again, jump back over to our um, sheet. Now place the values in. So our table has automatically expanded to um, the size that we need. So that's the information from the Bluebeam CSV file. Uh, we've got a couple of helper columns here, three. So basically the first one creates a unique name. It does that by taking the subject, sorry, taking the label and joining it with the subject. And this is used for sorting purposes later on. This column here, quantity. Now this just, if there's a length, it uses that item, that, that figure. Or if there's a count, it uses that figure. So basically, if I come down here, there's no lengths, but there are counts. So the count is what gets put in the total here, or the quantity here. Now I've also got my workings out for my fence post here. So this is a bit more of a complicated formula. So what it's doing is it's looking at the type of fence, cross-referencing it with the fencing details here. It will look at the number of posts required. Um, round it up to the nearest whole number and um, if it's a fencing it adds uh, an extra post and you come down to the gates we know that the gates need two posts because um, we put in the number of posts here, so we don't need to add any more onto those. So that is our um, setup there. 
So it's kind of a table of a uh, bit difficult to follow at the moment. But what then that happens with that is we bring it over to another page. Now, this is all dynamic. This is all done on uh, formulas. So once the details are in here, then you don't have to actually do anything on this page. So the first column here, it finds the unique names in the in the list here, finds the unique names and uh, sorts them into order. We've got another helper column here extracts the first number from the um, from this column. This is used for sorting later on. Then it, then I extract the full number or the plot details from here. And finally, we extract out the, the actual description for the item. As I say, this takes a bit of setting up, but it's done automatically. So from this information, what we can then do is uh, this, this is this column here, but it's done, it's sorted. As you can see, the plot numbers are sequential. Uh, unlike here, where the problem with uh, sorting in Excel is you got one, then 10, then 13. So it jumps in two. So plot six, it, it literally, in this sort of instance, it just looks at the first digit. That's why that sorted out a sequence. So this one sorting is sorted by, it takes this table here and it sorts it by this one here. Hence why we have to extract the first number. So that is a summary of the works sorted into plot sequence. After that, what we can do is do some sums. So we're looking at some here. So it will look at the blue bean details. It will look for the name in here. And if the name in that first column matches the details here, it will provide you with a, to with a total for that item. Here, we look at the, the uh, the details again, type of fencing, and it returns the unit. Our um, formulas then work out, they they bring forward the, the labor, material, and plant rates for the for each type each item of fencing or gates, it, it, it finds them automatically using X lookup formulas and it will provide us with a total for each item so one to five close ball fencing we've got 109 meters values 4744 pounds down here 16 to 20 1800 uh, mil large lap fencing 10.57 meters 463 pounds so we start getting some really useful information plot uh, plot by plot or group of plots by group of plots We've got lots of detail. Now, as with stage uh, two, where we had power curry, we've obviously started bringing forward these element breakdowns. So we can start using those a bit more. Oh, sorry, we jump onto the post next. So we've done the, done the fencing. Now this works out the post. So it will look at the, um, the posts, for each type of fencing. So once again, we've got the fencing type and we look at the fencing type in here and we, from that we can then pick up the post details here. So working it out in exactly the same way again, we've got the number of posts calculating from the blue bean details by looking up uh, the number of posts for each type of fencing which comes from this column here. We've got the labor material and plant rates and gives us a total value. 
we're still obviously looking here, these posts belong to these plots here. Next, total values per measure item. So close board fencing plots one to five comes to 6,915 pounds, which is post total plus fence total. So what else can we get from this? Well, next, total value, just a summary of the values per plot. So we ignore the actual descriptions. So we've got close board um, fence of three meter uh, centers for the post, close board gates and post to rail. So what we're actually doing, if we look here, got those three items and those three items down here, you can see that total is 12,191 pounds. Plots one to five is uh, the total value is 12,199 pounds. Total here matches the total here. So just a quick summary of the overall plot values. Next, we got some uh, help, uh, help of Collins for adding up the total values of the fencing. Um, so labor plant materials so that will be the labor rate here times the quantity there plus the labor rate here times the quantity here So that's wrong. Um, <laughs> no, that is right. Sorry. Um, so material rates and plant rates. Once again, the totals match up. Moving on. So where we had the breakdown here, we've now got that in a bit more detail. Plots one to five. Labour value is four thousand one hundred one pounds. Six thousand four hundred twenty for materials. And then you've got the plant rates. So then we've got, um, finally, we've got a total amount of uh, meterage for the close pool fences, how many gates we've got, etc. Just another little summary for us to look at. So showing this all in action. So here, if we jump over to here and we added some more, Close board fencing. I'm just doing this very quickly. And we added uh, some boundary fencing here. Now we've, we've measured that one, that fence, and this fence I'm just about to measure separately because we need to do that to work out the number of posts so what i'm going to do is here jump just very quickly these are plots 40 to 47 i've just noticed the light for some reason the layer hasn't brought forward there so we can just Allocate a layer there, and we need to jump back up to here, and they are 40 to 47 again. Once again, for some reason, it hasn't allocated a layer, so I'm not quite sure why it hasn't done that. I will check that out and uh, just make sure that all works before I um, finalize this workflow. Fencing again for those. So we've got layers and plot numbers. For all of those items. So if we go to, I think I need to close the old CSV first. I won't save that. 
there if we um, jump back into here, I can export CSV. Let's just have a look at the columns. Uh, well, I've got a unit tick here somewhere. Um, Here we've got measuring units. Let's now export that. I think that might have been from somewhere else. I was looking at and I ticked that column. So we can highlight all of these, copy, go back to our spreadsheet, blue beam details, paste the values in there. We can see the uh, the new plot's been imported. Everything here is updated. Now, if we jump back over to our prices, you can see that we've now got plots 40 to 47 in here. We've got all the values. Everything's updated. Totals for each uh, plot, overall totals. We've got our total values for plot types here. And in the columns over here, it's broken down again into labour plant materials. The, over, uh, the totals all match across all of these um, items. And our summary of uh, the different types of fencing and gates is all uh, updated too. So we get a lot more information out of this. Um, a bit of formatting needs, needs to be sorted out here. But there, there's a lot of details here, which is very useful when you're doing a big project. The downside to this setup is um, that you need to export your uh, details to CSV and then import them into this spreadsheet. Um, but you can see the, these are all dynamic. So you, once you've done that, it is just a case of copying and pasting. If you were to use uh, macros, then you could automate the process of importing the uh, CSV file. But we're trying to just do this example with uh, just basic formulas, no macros, no Power Query, because that's what we'll be using in stage four. Um, yep, that's it for stage three. Thanks. Bye.